Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest on our show today. It is Dr. Landers, and she is an amazing woman who has a interest in helping mothers and, and women around the world balance their life and not have to suffer burnout. Because as you know, women wear a lot of hats in this world, and sometimes we have trouble balancing all the things that we do in life, and burnout could lead to a lot of bad things. Things. So we want to keep ourselves balanced, healthy, and happy. And Dr. Landers is here today to show us how. So Dr. Landers, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. I'm so excited to have you here. It's an honor. Tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Oh, thank you, Stacy. I appreciate that. I am a retired physician. I practiced neonatology for 34 years. That's the intensive care of, of sick newborns and premature babies. And I loved that field. It was, you know, busy, sometimes stressful, but very fulfilling. I got to know parents because my little patients would stay in the hospital for three, four, five, sometimes six months or more. And I got to be part of the family in a way that was so truly rewarding. What I learned in that uh, experience was a lot about myself because I was talking to moms whose babies were sick and I was a mom at the same time raising my children. Um, I would often hear from moms, well, how do you manage so-and-so or what do you think about so-and-so? Um, because you're a pediatrician, you're supposed to know this stuff. And I would say, oh, my kid has that problem or she developed this and it threw us for a loop. And they would always go, Oh my God, that's so reassuring to hear that you've experienced the same thing. It's not just me. And so I noticed really in the middle of my career as a neonatologist that mothers in general love to feel supported and validated. We share so many universal feelings. We love our children. If we work, we hopefully love our jobs. We love our spouse or partners. We want to have a life that's joyful, but we all fall into traps with overwork, lack of self-care, uh, mom guilt, mm -hmm. uh, not asking our partner for help. I mean, there's so many different little traps, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me that we fall into along the way. So after I retired, Stacy, I didn't have much to do. And so when you're an ICU doc and then you stop practicing, it's kind of boring. <laughs> so I started writing. I started writing about the experiences of my patients, my favorite moms, those who were inspirational, those who challenged me, uh, the toughest cases, uh, mostly good ones. There are, there are a few that had bad outcomes. And I wrote a memoir that included all of those inspirational stories of courageous parents in the NICU. And once the draft was going around, my friends, they said, well, this is not enough. You need to put in your own stuff, your yeah. own motherhood stuff. And I went, nobody wants to hear that. And they said, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. And so I went back and I added my own mom stories, again, always uh, demonstrating the challenges that working moms meet. They're almost universal. Who yeah. takes care of the baby? What do you do when he's sick at school and you have to leave work? What about when your kid needs to see a therapist? What if your adolescent develops an eating disorder? Right. What if your young child develops ADHD? What do you do about that? What if your husband's not helping? What do you do about that? My husband was also a physician and he didn't help very much in the beginning. So I put in all those stories. I put in all my personal stories, how I was confronted with normal childhood challenges and normal working mom challenges. And I ended up with a book a memoir that's called So Many Babies. And I have been told by lots of women that my book is reassuring to working mothers. It's not meant to be comforting for new parents because I talk about NICU babies, 
right. but who, who in general are sick, they're in the hospital. But it is reassuring and comforting to women who are trying to balance work and raising kids and being married or being a single mother. I tried to write it in a way that would give women some power over their situation by uh, um, telling them that that their struggles are very typical, that we share those struggles, how I got support from my colleagues, my friends, whether it was a work friend, another pediatrician, whether it was a neighborhood friend who was nothing like me, maybe she was a stay-at-home mom, or whether it was a friend who had we had children in the same school. And so I talk about all those different ways to find support. And in my memoir, I talk about all the different ways I learned to care for myself. Mm -hmm. Now, every working mother knows, and you know this too, that we go through different phases in our lives where sometimes we take better care of ourselves, sometimes we don't. If our kid's in trouble, if our kid is sick, if our mm-hmm. marriage is in trouble, we're not going to put the same effort into taking care of ourselves right. um, that we do when things are on balance. So I wanted my story, uh, my memoir, to tell an accurate story of a regular old working mom, even though I'm a physician, who really tried to do everything and succeeded in being not a perfect mother, repeat, right. not a perfect mother but a good enough mother. And it took me a while to be able to say that, Mm -hmm. that I ended up being a good enough mother. Right. I think like earlier we were talking about, you know, a lot of moms feel guilty. They always feel they could either do better or they, you know, they get burnt out or they're starting to feel burnt out because sometimes you don't even feel Mm -hmm. until it gets really bad. And, you know, moms feel guilty or they feel shameful to take some time out for themselves. That's, you know, everybody needs a little self-love. And I think a lot of moms from who I've talked into, you know, say, well, I feel guilty or I feel kind of shameful, you know, if I, if I put myself, you know, before my family, before my kids, before my husband, they have this mentality that they think, you know, Everybody has to come first. That's the job of a mom. That's the job of a wife. But it really it should be the opposite, don't you think? Right, right. Our culture has somehow taught us that we handle everything and we put everybody else ahead of ourselves. And I think what we're slowly learning is that that's a real trap. That yeah. um, saying that we we have to put everybody on our list and we're at the very bottom if we ever make it to the bottom of our list harms us. I talk to women who try and try to do everything. And instead of using methods to deal with stress in their lives, whether it's stress from being a mom, stress from working, they haven't instituted methods to cope with the stress. Sometimes Mm -hmm. that's just talking to a friend. Other times it's exercising, going out for a walk, getting outside in nature. Sometimes it's actually talking to a therapist or a coach or counselor. But women who tend to have better balance in their lives, I think, learn that taking care of themselves is not selfish. It's really quite necessary. Um, if, If you're not controlled, if you're not calm, if you're not okay with the fact that your kid has 103 fever and you've given the Tylenol and you're leaving for work and the babysitter's going to call you and you're going on and doing your job, if you're not okay with that, you're going to be a maniac at work. Um, And we all have to face those kind of situations. Women tend to carry Uh, issues about their family in the back of their brain. I did that too. I would be in the middle of the ICU taking care of a sick patient. And I would be worried about whether or not my daughter had gotten that project finished that she wanted to turn in for AP English. And we all do that. Whether my other daughter actually made it to the varsity volleyball team because she was just devastated when um, she heard that 
she didn't. And she had been on the JV team. So we take all the concerns and the problems of our children with us in the back of our minds to work, which makes us even more stressed. Right. And then we, and then we go home to take care of our family and we're still stressed. We haven't recognized that there has to be some outlet for that stress. There has yeah. to be some physical and emotional way for us to calm, to de-stress, to get control of our emotions, because it's really hard to be a working mom. You're tired. Yes. You're pushed to the limit sometimes. It yeah. It's really difficult. And I want working moms listening to tell themselves, what I'm doing is really difficult. This yeah. is not an easy thing to do. When you work full time and you raise a family and you're married or not, and we all have extended families, that is a lot of life. That is a lot of living and a lot of life. And I have to take care of myself because I can't handle that all, that lovely, wonderful bundle, unless wow. I take care of myself. What are some suggestions that you have for working moms that have carried so much on their shoulders and they're having a hard time? Some people use, you know, food for comfort. Some people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they have to get on the edge where they can easily blow up and, and get angry for no apparent reason because they have so much repressed emotions going on because they're handling so much that a human being is not meant to carry, carry that much a weight. In, in, in one shot, you know, what are your right. suggestions for someone who is going through that? Well, I'll tell you the first thing, the most important thing is self-awareness for working mothers who are tired all the time, who wake up exhausted, who aren't getting enough sleep, who feel inadequate being a mother who are triggered by a difficult child or triggered by a work, a man, uh, their work, a manager they don't like or a supervisor who's a jerk. Mm -hmm. For mothers who feel like they're not doing a good job and they're exhausted physically and emotionally, knowing that sometimes it's burnout, sometimes it's not quite there, but knowing that you're there is very important because you can't heal unless you figure out the triggers. Yes. If it's that difficult child, do you have someone to take care of him or her so you can have some respite time away from him or her? Do you have a caregiver helper? Uh, do you have an advocate at school who, a special teacher who helps you with a special needs kid? Do you have a colleague at work who you can talk to about the jerk supervisor who doesn't help anybody and y'all can't stand him? So mm -hmm. the self-awareness is first. Talking to someone and getting help from someone is second. Yes. And then making some time to take care of yourself. That sounds so difficult, but here is the thing, Stacy, and you know this. If you just walk around the block in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. if there's some trees and bushes or a park, if you get out in nature, in green spaces, you will feel better. Yes. If you exercise outside, you will feel better. If you exercise anywhere, you will feel better. I discovered mm -hmm. that early in my career that whether it was walking, whether it was running, whether it was going to the gym, my mood lifted when I exercised at least three days a week. And I'm talking like 30 minutes, three days a week. Mm -hmm. If you call a friend, not text, not Facebook, but call, pick up the phone and call, or better yet, have coffee during yeah. the day or meet for lunch, talk to your friend, talk to the, someone who you love and they love you mm -hmm. and sort through your issues. S connection and social support are crucial for moms who are overdone. Absolutely yeah. crucial. They're just as important as self-awareness. And they're probably as important as exercise and sleep. 
-hmm. And I'll tell you a secret. When I was stressed out, I guess this was later, maybe in my 40s, I would come home and drink a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. And then I would drink another glass of wine. And mm -hmm. I thought that was a good way to control my stress. I had a job where I was working way too many hours and it felt like it decompressed me. But over time, it made my sleep worse. It made my mood bad. It made my stress actually increase. And I figured out that not drinking alcohol made me feel better. Yes. I had a conversation with my husband or mm -hmm. we went out on a date. So again, right. you have to examine the things that you're doing to cope. Yes. Are you drinking too much? Are you eating too much? What's the trigger and what are you using to cope? Because yeah. burnout won't go away if you just wish it to go away. Something has, has to change if you're burned out. Yes. Whether it's extra care, whether it's time away, whether it's exercise with a friend, a yoga class, whether it's taking up journaling and writing gratitudes or lots and lots of different ways. Mm -hmm. I wrote a book, Stacy. It's an ebook called Defeating Burnout, a guide mm -hmm. for working mothers. I feel so strongly about this that I wanted to write down all the things that I had used when I was burned out for other women to be able to use if they think they're burned out and right. it has checklists for self-assessment and it has inventories for your personal and your professional life and then of course it talks about methods to relieve stress and take care of yourself so yes. I've got that book for moms and because I think we're not born knowing how to handle burnout. We're not born knowing how to handle everything in our lives. Right. Our culture tells us we're supposed to know. I saw yeah. my mother never sit still. You probably did the same thing. Right. She was a school teacher, uh, a librarian, and she got home late and cooked supper and fussed and was short. And on the weekends, she ran around doing errands or sewing or something like that. I never saw my mother sit still. And so I grew up with this notion of doing something mm -hmm. and I'm guilty. I see you doctors really like to do something, do things. I had to teach myself that sitting still and being something was mm -hmm. as important as doing something. Yes. I like that. I like that mm -hmm. a lot. I, I I've known so many people in my life that always felt like they have to be doing something because their mm -hmm. mentality was like, I have to care. I have to do this. <clears> I have to do that. And, and they never sat down. They never relaxed. And I feel like it caught up with them as they got older. You could mm -hmm. see it aging on their face. You could see their mentality start to even decline, you know, faster than others. And, and I think a lot had to do with not being able to relax give yourself mm -hmm. time because I feel like your brain needs to relax and renew itself because it's just like any other organ. If you overwork it, it's going to have problems, you know, right. because human. And, you know, I, I think, you know, like you said, learning how to relax is just as important as doing. And I think people don't realize that. I think that's a factor that people don't realize that relaxing is just as important as doing when it comes to being a mom and a working mother. Right. I discovered that I like to play when my kids were little. My husband's not very athletic. And so we would all go out in the backyard or we would go up in the cul-de-sac and ride bikes. Yeah. I taught my children how to pitch and catch and I enrolled them in T-ball because I love doing that stuff. And I loved taking hikes through the neighborhood with the kids. And I had a neighborhood friend who said, why are you always out here with the children? I said, uh, first of all, I'm not off very much. I only mm -hmm. had like one day off every 12 <laughs> at this particular job. And I said, I really want to play and relax and have fun on my day off. I did right. not want to run errands. And yes. I learned really early that playing, especially being outside, being in mm -hmm. green spaces, was very uplifting. Yes. <clears throat> I like that. I like that a lot. 
And mm -hmm. I, I feel that, you know, a, a lot of people, um, they have to really learn that, you know, not to compare themselves to other individuals. I feel I, a lot of times I see, I see moms compare themselves to other moms and then feel mm -hmm. that they're not doing enough. And, you know, I think the worst thing that we can do is compare our lives, ourselves to others, because you don't really know what goes on in that person's life, you know, and, right. and some. Some people may have more time to do other things and some people, you know, may on, be on the go consistently and they might not be able to have that free time or another mm -hmm. person might have obstacles with their child that they're dealing with. You know, their child right. might have a disability or a disorder and they're dealing with that. So everybody's going to be on their own different level and, and even what's going on with that person, you know, is that person in perfect health? Is that person struggling with things along with being a mom and a, and a working right. mom? there's so many factors that have taken place. I think one of the, the worst things people could do is to compare themselves to other individuals and to just try to be their best selves and, and know when to stop, you know? And I think that's key also is some people just don't know when to stop, you know? And, and, you know, we talked about symptoms when it comes to, you know, sometimes in the beginning, a lot of people don't see the burnout symptoms and mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. when they finally realize it, are there things that m moms can look for? So they don't get to that point where they're mm. in the process of burning out. Yeah, I think there are some things and that's why I developed the checklist. It's on my website. Uh, free, susanlandersmd.com. It's also in the book that I mentioned, Defeating Burnout. Um, there, you can assess your sleep. You can assess your feelings about exercise. You can assess your feelings about your boss. You can recognize that you're not sleeping adequately, that you never exercise, that you're eating too much, that you're gaining weight. You can recognize that you and your husband have a strained relationship. So I think checklists help women in that self-awareness process to sort of go through the list of all the factors that influence us. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and it helped me a lot. I mm -hmm. was 41 years old. My third child was a year. Uh, I had kids seven, four, and a year. And we moved to a new city. My husband got a great new job and my job was awful. And my manager, my director was awful. And we worked 12 days in a row to have one day off. And on some of the rotations, I had to go into the hospital and make rounds 30 days in a row. So wow. very old fashioned, very. And I, and I said to him, you know, I've got three little kids. My nanny can't work more than 50 hours a week. And I was probably working 60 or 70. And my husband was filling in the gaps. And he looked at me and he said, why don't you get a weekend nanny? And I went, you really don't get this, do you? So I struggled with that schedule. And I struggled with that boss that, that was bad for me. Mm -hmm. and, and I was stressed. And I tried to keep up with my kids. And I noticed that I wasn't sleeping well, I wasn't eating, I was short with my children, I would have temper outbursts, I would yell more often. Those are huge red flags for burnout. Mm -hmm. And I visited with a friend at work and I told her how I was feeling. She said, before we knew what burnout was from working mom, she said, are you depressed? Maybe you need to see a therapist. So I went to see a friend of hers, a psychiatrist. And he said, tell me about your life. And I told him about my life. And I described being the person on the stage spinning sticks with plates on top of the sticks and the plates were spinning and that I had all of these plates going and running from stick to stick so that I could rotate the stick and keep all the plates going because I didn't want any plate to fall. Right. And if a plate was wobbling, I would run over and spin the stick and get it to work. And he laughed. He laughed at me. And I said, what is so funny? He said, if that's your life, why don't you just take down some of the plates? Yeah. Yeah. And that experience, that epiphany 
allowed me with his help to look at all the aspects of my life what I was doing professionally, what I was doing as a spouse, my husband's job, my children, what their challenges were, what I wanted to do as a mom. Yeah. <clears throat> and I rearranged my work life. I changed my job. I did something way less stressful. I became a better mother. I added exercise. I had already done some playing. I added other ways to cope with stress to my life. Yeah. And I took down four or five plates and it made a huge difference. And so I like to use that analogy because I think all working moms have all those plates spinning. Yeah. And sometimes we need to sit down and look at the plates and say, okay, what is most important to me? Right. What can I change? What can I control? And what's outside my control? For right. example, my bad manager was outside my control, but I changed my job. Yes. And that was within my control. And my three kids all kind of rocked along the same. And my husband and I worked on our marriage. And so I got better. And that yeah. experience taught me so much about what working mothers go through. I mean, I, I was a working mother, three kids, married, two professions. And I learned nobody's going to take care of this but me. Right. Nobody's going to nobody's going to put those plates up and down and make decisions about which plates I spend but me. Right. I'm the one who decides. Mm -hmm. And I think women today can give themselves that skill. Yes. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Now, did you ever feel that you failed in any way when you started taking down those plates? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause I was in academic medicine. I was working for a medical school. I had worked for medical school in Houston for eight years. And then in this other city for six, and I felt like a big fat failure because I hadn't done enough research projects. I hadn't written enough papers. I hadn't presented enough. I had done some, but not a lot because I had three kids. And when yeah. I was off, I was with them, not in the, in the office working. Right. And so I felt it took me a while to get over. You're not a failure. You're still a physician. You're still doing a good job. And when we moved to yet another city, we moved to Austin, Texas, I found a wonderful job where I did lots of great things. I was the medical director of a mother's milk bank. I got special expertise in breastfeeding medicine. I taught and trained neonatal nurse practitioners. I worked with residents. I did everything but research. And I was really happy. And my kids were happy and they thrived and they did well. And I had enough time to be a mother. And I think that's the whole point of this. You do have to make some concessions. You can't always be the ultimate professional 80 hours a week if you want to raise three kids. Maybe, you, I mean, I couldn't do that. Maybe some people can, but you do have to make choices. Yeah. And I learned in my midlife that when I make choices, I'm the most happy. Yes. <laughs> I, I agree with you. And 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 many <clears throat> moms that were very successful working mothers had to sacrifice certain things in their life if they wanted mm -hmm. to do their career. And mm -hmm. if they wanted to spend more time with their children then like you said, they needed to take the plates down. So I think it's a choice, you know, mm -hmm. what's important, you know, is, is having, you know, going on more trips or having more income or do, being able to do this more important or is staying home and being able to have, spend more time with your children and maybe do more things with your children more important and find that happy balance where you're going right. to be be on both sides of the of the park and you I know the other the other thing about that balance Stacy that I found was that it really teeter totters sometimes I did 
more medicine and less kids. And sometimes I did more kids and less medicine. And it really is our choice. It really is the way we, the only control we have over our lives, not mm-hmm. how healthy our children are, not how healthy our marriage is. Well, we have some control over that. Not how great our manager or boss is, but what we choose to do, where we choose to put our effort. That is so important. And it will vary. It will vary through the different phases of women's lives. It has for you. It has for me. Um, We all have different transitions we go through. That period when I was so burnt out in my 40s taught me so much about my own capability. And again, I had to shake that image of my mother doing something constantly But it was a real growth process. And I have always believed as a physician, as a mom, as a friend, that the things that are the most difficult in your Mm -hmm. life will help you grow the most. They will be the most beneficial. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you really want to emphasize on some important factors, what are some things you really like to get across to working moms so they don't have to experience burnout? Uh, you can make an assessment of your life and your choices, and that's a healthy thing to do. You can compare notes with a trusted friend and, uh, And that's a healthy thing to do. You can share with your spouse or partner if you're connected. And they will learn something about you that they didn't know. And you can make changes if you're willing to learn to take care of yourself. Burnout is preventable. But it's only preventable if we learn to value ourselves and to have some self-compassion and some kindness and say, well, you know, working 50 hours a week really stinks Mm -hmm. and I've got to get a better job. Um, And having a a friend say, you're right. That is pretty bad. You you're right. You should get a different job or the friend saying, well, it's just that boss and this, you know, keep on keeping on. So, Bouncing ideas off of other women who are going through the same thing is so golden. It is human connection at its best. It is the support system that women value the most. Our friends, our colleagues, our social circles. And I'm not talking Instagram and I'm not talking text messages. It is people we are with personally sitting down, having lunch, having coffee, sharing our ideas, those things are so important in the process of figuring out what you want Mm -hmm. and what you can control. I think that's great advice. And, and another pointer, I just want to point out that you had mentioned earlier, it's good to have either a therapist or a coach, or Mm -hmm. even we had mentioned earlier, we were talking about how psychotherapy can really help individuals. And I like psychotherapy because like when you speak to someone like a therapist or you speak to someone like a coach, you're, you're using your frontal cortex of your brain and, you know, you're getting in and out, you're, you're, you're getting contact of what emotions that you're prevalent, that you're feeling, but psychotherapy really goes into the back of the brain and it goes, it really contacts those emotions and, and it, and it's a, it's a process with the psychotherapist showing you and guiding you how to let go of those emotions, because unless we learn how to let go those feelings, those emotions, doesn't matter how many times we talk about it, we have to let it go. And if you're feeling burnt out, or if you're feeling shameful, or if you're feeling like you're a failure, because you're not able to hold all those dishes on the stick, you know, it, it's it's good to be able to get, I think, grasp those emotions, and then yes. deal with them, and then let them go and just be able to move forward. So when you had talked about psychotherapy, and how you thought it was beneficial, 
I agree totally. I think that's, you know, it's, it's psycho, psychotherapy is not something that's really talked about a lot, but it's, it's such a great therapy for individuals. And I, I would, I would highly recommend it to even work in moms to look into if they're yes. feeling overwhelmed and they, they really need to talk to somebody and they want to let go a lot of those, those emotions uh, from burnout. I have a friend who's a social worker and a counselor, and she is semi-retired, and she works for employee assistance programs and does 12 visits, which employers pay for, and she has talked to lots of women and men who think they're burned out. So I implore your listeners, check with your HR department. Do you have employee assistance programs? Do, does your employer give you 12 visits with a therapist or a counselor? Can mm -hmm. you just focus on you and sort through the issues in those first 12 visits? My friend says sometimes people just kind of get clear within four or five visits, and then they sort of work on polishing the plan. And she has been so surprised at how much people enjoy being able to share what they're going through with a professional. Yeah. I agree with you, Stacy. Psychotherapy is nothing to be ashamed of. It is helpful. It is counseling at its finest. It is necessary if you have some deep-rooted childhood issues. I had a very harsh authoritarian father. And I'm sure that's why I turned into a perfectionist because that was the way I got a good attention, making yeah. A's and becoming a doctor. But right. uh, so I had a lot of issues to deal with about those feelings that are deep seated from childhood. And so therapy helped me a whole lot. And yes. I know that it helps other people because I've talked to lots of working moms who actually you know, make the break and go get some therapy or work with a coach. Some mm -hmm. coaches are really good at counseling. Um, check with your employee assistance plan. Start there. See if you can do something that's free. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Now, the do you offer any types of services or, you, have, you know, you have your book you know, and, you know, <laughs> so what are the different things that you offer to individuals? People can contact me personally on my website and I get back in touch with them and a chat by email and over the phone, but I don't do counseling. I do have a new newsletter on Substack called Moms Matter. And I love writing that newsletter because it's just stuff I'm interested in and stuff younger women are interested in. And so I think that is my offering for support for working moms right now. I mm -hmm. mentioned the book, Defeating Burnout. I mentioned my memoir, So Many Babies. And I have lots of free resources on my website. So if your listeners want to go to my website, susanlandersmd.com, they'll find checklists, guidelines, journaling books, wellness books, not books, wellness um, uh, journals to plot out your week. I'm sure, Stacy, you have things like that to offer too. But um, I also have some resources for parents about childhood issues in general, mm -hmm. premature babies, cerebral palsy. I don't have anything about epilepsy. I need to add that. Uh, milestone trackers from the CDC and other organizations. Because I like for parents to get good information, not yeah. to get um, ask Dr. Google. I think asking Dr. Google is kind of fraught with problems. If you're going to okay. ask Dr. Google, get Dr. Google to take you to a medical school site a physician yes. or a children's yes. hospital. <laughs> yes. And I say that all the time when people try to Google an issue, a medical issue, I say, where did you get that information? I say, <laughs> right. did you get it. Did you get it from a medical site? Did you find right. it in a medical journal? Did a doctor write it? You know, was it right. checked by, you know, a clinician, you know, and because there's so many things out there, people try to diagnose themselves and not all the information mm -hmm. out there 
it's a lot of the information is not accurate. And also, right. you know, a symptom could lead to, it, it could be many things, not just, you know, one thing, if you have a headache and, you know, it could be a thousand and one things, you know, so you really have right. to get valuable information. And it's always good if something in your life is continuing and it's not getting better if, if, and you're experiencing it to get medical help. And I always highly right. suggest that it's very important. And I think it's, uh, it's great that you provide that. Now, if people want to get your books, can they find them on Amazon? Where can they find yes. them? Yes, the uh, my book "So Many Babies" is on Amazon and on my website. My ebook "Defeating Burnout" is only available on my website, and mm -hmm. I just put it on sale, so your listeners can go there and get it. Uh, and I'm going to develop more resources as moms tell me what they're interested in. Uh, but my newsletter is where I'm putting most of my. Uh, attention, a weekly newsletter. And again, I'm talking about things that mothers are interested in. And the comments are great. And it's been really fun to I never had a newsletter before. So it's I've been doing it about a year. It's been great. It's called Moms Matter. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I think it's so important because I always used to say, you know, you read the book, you know, the um, 12 months of, of expectancy, you know, and you it, goes, it takes you through the 12 months of when you're pregnant, but no one gives you a handbook after you're pregnant. You know, you just, you're, you're clueless. This baby is given to you. You have a, a life in your hands and that's it. You know, you're right. learning from experience. You're learning from the people around you. And it's sometimes, you know, like things don't go, you know, things never go perfectly. And you, you, no. you have obstacles, things happen. And it's like, what do I do? So especially right. when you're a new mother or a new father, you know, you're, you're, you, you know, certain things could happen and you just don't know what to do. You don't know where the right answer is or the best options. And so it's great to have somebody like you who could actually steer people in the right direction and maybe give them the right resources to look into so they could actually get adequate help and, and, and have somebody there or an organization or a doctors that could actually give them the, the information they need and, and gear them on the right path way. So I think that's wonderful. I really do. Thank I you. love it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Now, before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to mention that we haven't covered during our conversation? <clears throat> I want to reiterate to working parents, not just working moms, that what you do is so important. And um, being in two places at once is impossible. None of us can do that. And so that juggling act, that imbalance of your family life and your work life is really an important thing to do and an important thing to feel really good about. Um, yeah. Some of us want to be all jobs and some of us want to be all parents and that's fine. But for the majority of us that are doing both, please take the time to figure out what makes you happy what controls your stress, what methods you use to feel better, to be able to get some joy out of your life. Cause yes. we have kids because they give us so much joy. Yes. Presumably not just, headaches, <laughs> but lots and lots of joy. So. Uh -huh. I love it. Oh, Dr. Landers, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for all your information and your knowledge and for you know taking the time to share it with us. I really appreciate you and everything that you do. And thank you once again for being on our show. Thank you, Stacy. All right, you have a wonderful day. You too.